uh, when I travel around the country, um, the one group of people that I always enjoy connecting with, talking to, and it's easy to find them, it's easy to um, locate, identify them, whether it's a rideshare driver, food delivery driver, or a truck driver. I, I, I have a lot of time for truck drivers because this is a hard job crisscrossing the United States or wherever they are on planet Earth, putting in big hours and, and you know, to, 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 to feed their family. So whether you're a rideshare driver, taxi driver, food delivery driver, bus driver, a trucker, which is a driver, um, we're all family. We're all extended family. But to hear from a trucker how Uber is taking advantage of them, oh my God, talk about similarities to the ride share and the food delivery world, right? Or the food delivery gig workers. Same story. These Uber freight drivers that are entering contacts with uh, enter, entering contracts with Uber um, are getting screwed over the very same way we ride share drivers um, are getting effed over. And um, appreciate the email because it goes into a lot of detail explaining how they do it. And um, you know, now that I finally figured out how to invert or mirror my camera. I mean, I got a lot of complaints over the last 10 videos. Something went wrong with the settings and, and, and you, you guys and girls were getting uh, the messages in reverse. Uh, finally, with the help of my techie guy, I couldn't figure it out. I'm, I'm not a big, I'm not a big computer tech sav guy. So I've got guys that walk me through that. And, so, and sometimes they even have to come over to my house to, to fix things. I am not the tech guru. I love embracing tech, but don't ask me any questions how to hook something up or, or, or fix something. I, I, I'm, I'm not good at that. Just ain't good at that. I can admit right here, that's my weakness. So hello, thank you for your videos and fighting for the rights of drivers. Well, appreciate you saying that. And yes, that is the job, right? That is a good job description. We collectively, we fight for for the rights of drivers, we share the videos, we share their shenanigans, we share their bullshit, we share their bait and switch tactics, we share their latest and famous pilot projects where they try to undress drivers. So this to me is, is a group effort, but I, I, am, I appreciate the introduction here. So I'm not sure if you are aware, says this gentleman, and I'm not putting his name out there, uh, for respect, um, you know, I, I don't want him to get into trouble with Uber Freight. So trucking industry has fought this fight and to the day, you know, the same, same battle we are fighting. There is a standard way for paying drivers who own and operate or lease, talking about trucking. It is 60% in general practice in general practice, while some bad companies will fall below that and better ones above that rate. So what he's saying is that I, the truck driver, 60 percent, you, the company, whoever you are, 40 percent. If it, it, the ride share world, it's more like 70 percent for the company, um, anywhere from 25 to 40 percent for the driver. So. Uh, the percentages here explained are um, still in the driver's favor. That is if they are not engaging with Uber Freight, right? If they just go out into the, to the big world and take on jobs, what he's saying, with brokers involved, blah, blah, blah. It's usually 60% the truck driver, 40% the company. Now, any other truck drivers out there, if you have stories... If you want to join this community of drivers, please do so. I, I, I would love to expose anything that truckers bring me. I would love to have truckers in my environment. As I said, when I travel around, when you go to these big pit stops or, or pilot or wherever they are, right, love, and, 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 and you fill up gas, just right next door, you'll see all the truckers. Go hang out there. With with real, real hardworking people, right? Um, sit down, have a meal, get to know them. Um, I 
I've done that many times, whether it's in Phoenix, in LA, or, 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 or Texas, or, Albu or, or New Mexico. Sit down with them. And I said, well, what do you do? And I said, well, I'm a YouTuber, and I can pull it right up there on my phone and show them. And I say, you know, I fight for drivers, but it's usually rideshare drivers, Uber, Lyft. Oh, wow, I, I'm a truck driver. I drive for different companies. Sometimes I do Uber Freight. Oh, tell me about it. So you learn so much from drivers. And when I say drivers, I mean, I, I sit down. I'll take taxi drivers for lunch or for a coffee. They know me there. At the Starbucks in front of LAX, the people know me. Whether you're a limo driver, whether you're one of the Armenian uh, SUV Cadillac drivers, whether you drive a Maybach, whether you drive a taxi, whether you drive a shuttle, whether I stop at a, at a, at a, at a, at a gas station halfway between LA and Phoenix, the people know you from the channel. They know that you embrace all the drivers as a family of drivers. I don't treat a taxi driver any differently to a rideshare driver. I'll invite both for in and out, both for coffee, because I want to respect everyone. I want to learn from everyone. What I can bring to the world is teach people about fleets, how to build out fleets, how to start your own private business, how to become a true independent contractor. I'm good at that. But at the same time, if I have a channel, I want to learn from people like this gentleman, how can I improve that business or, or his or her life as a trucker. And again, and in the trucking world, there's, there's, there's men and women out there. So let me stick to the story before I go. I, I tend to ramble a bit and go a lot off the topic. You guys know that about me, right? I'm, I like to talk, but I also walk the walk. Um, it is 60% in general practice, while some bad companies will fall below that and some Better ones above that. 60% should be a minimum standard. Okay, that's good to know. Since drivers are responsible for the costs other than brokering the load. Where the 40% of pay comes in for the broker, obviously the broker gets to stack that 40% on multiple loads going out during that same time period. Uses a 40% a, a X800. Not sure exactly. M maybe... Someone, or may, maybe this gentleman can clarify what that means. 40% X800. Whereas the driver only gets 60% X1 for the same time. You can imagine Uber, DoorDash, etc. gets 1 million or more X percentage. Just explain that to me, that's all. Low expenses at any given time, how many fares all at once? with driver getting only one X percentage expenses. I, I need a lot of clarification on that, on that paragraph because I'm not quite following the person. What, what, I, what I am seeing is driver 60% company that's brokering the load 40% and obviously out of that 40% probably higher than 40% because they, they farm it out, right? They get multiple loads. We only get the production power of one. Whereas the broker, Uber, DoorDash, Lyft get the production power of one million. Basically, all these platforms are is a faster way to broker, commit to a load and contract and a faster way to pay. So what, what he's saying is that the Uber freight platform is a faster way to broker it. Uh, to commit to a load, to contract to it, and a faster way to get paid. Whereas brokers have time on the phone, writing up load contract, bill of loading, uh, of lading, etc. The payout due to the process being much more simplified should be much higher for the driver since most of the workload and expenses falls on the driver. 100% correct. And it's the same for the rideshare world. It's the same for the food delivery world. But to start with, a standard, I've described what trucking industry does. And, and, I, and I appreciate that, that you explained that because I've truly learned a lot from you as a trucker. Um, and I hope you too, the person watching the video. And, 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 and I hope we can maybe even do an interview with this person because he has used Uber Freight. And Uber Freight pretty much operates the same way as I found out, as Uber Rideshare and Uber Food Delivery. 
they reaming, they all have something in common. The driver gets reamed, gets screwed, right? So the vehicle standards are much the same. It's true. Need to be certain year of truck and other factors come into play with maintenance accounts, insurance fees and licensing. Okay, a lot of common ground there. Medical cards to prove health and background checks for bus drivers are more rigorous as well as any kind of sensitive loads, chemical loads, whatever. Makes perfect sense. Can go all the way up to secret clearance background checks being performed. Yeah, if, you, if you're transporting military equipment, for example. All these are driver's responsible costs. Wow. I do believe, so, 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 so what, what, what I'm hearing there is obviously you have to get the vehicle. It's got to be the right year. You pay for the maintenance. You pay for the cost. You pay for the insurance. If you want different licenses and, and maybe uh, drive chemical loads or maybe drive military equipment, obviously you've got to do courses. You've got to pay for that. But then you have more certifications, right? And, and, and you're earning more. Pretty much all makes sense up to here. I do believe hauling people around to be a need for a special background check and health check. I agree with that. And the same should apply. Not that the trucker is transporting people around, they're transporting cargo, but the same same really applies for this um, uh, background check and health check should be done. I mean, health check, mental health check, right? Some of, some of the wackos getting into our cars seriously need mental health checks. Maybe even a special endorsement required on a driver's license to be qualified. Just personal thoughts here. Good personal thoughts. Thank you. So I hope I helped with some insight into a standard that will be helpful in getting this for all drivers. It will need to be moved forward via a union or massive group effort. I agree with that. One of the challenges that all driving jobs have is now they use inexperienced drivers easily. Exactly. A lot of them being getting illegal accounts and and. Hopefully, hopefully you're not seeing this in the trucking industry. Maybe it's happening in the trucking industry. It used to not be that way. How that works is new drivers are ignorant to the set standards long fought for that are fair to both driver and the company. Amen. Very well said. They only know money can be made. And I, I, I think this greed, this greed um of of they only know how money can be made is 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 happening now that they can analyze more data they have ai so companies are really rethinking the way how they can make profits and i'm telling you the ai etc and i'm sure a ton of ai a ton of ai is used in uber freight transportation in ride share and food delivery and it's all being used against the, the trucking driver, against the rideshare driver, against the food delivery driver, and against the passenger. No doubt about it. It's a pretty evil way they make their profits right now. But, but the investors are fine with it. The company is fine with it. The salaries get paid. The millions flow. And it, it, the, the, the question is, do you want to play the game with them? Or can you outsmart them? Can you out trick them and do other things to capitalize on their algorithmic discrimination. Can you figure out ways how to smart, outsmart them? Yes, we can. We're good at that. The system these apps use is much like a Kino machine. They get you hooked in with good pay up front then slowly take that down. Man, do I know that I used to operate four thousand casino machines making about 70 to 80 thousand a day in South Africa and I, after a few years I had to stop these machines are so freaking evil and make so much money and are always working against the individual the more I figured that out the more I'm like hell no I'm gonna pay a big price on karma on this one, which I did. I mean, I uh, karma slapped me in the phrase, face many times in life, but I can relate to what he says here. It makes perfect sense. The, the system these apps use is much like a Keno machine, K-E-N-O. They get you hooked in with good pay up front, then slowly take that down. It's like driving in a casino, right? 
till you're fighting to achieve what you once had. They're using a very similar system on all these apps. That's why it's made easy to sign up. Don't want the peanuts fine. Someone else who don't know better will, and it repeats, right? And then we call those desperados. It's been going on in trucking for a while now. So if it, it sounds like this game, this game, this gamification is also being played with Uber Freight and a lot of freight or truck drivers are falling for it, getting sucked in, just like rideshare drivers are, just like food delivery drivers are. What, 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 what annoys me, I've got to throw this in, I don't know how it just came up, but um, the game of tip baiting, right? You have a contract, food delivery guy goes, gets a meal, brings it to person A, or brings it to a company or to a house. And that is a contract set in stone. The, the tip is there, the fare is there. Okay, $15. And you, then you bring the food to the house, to the business, and you find out it's $2. That's not even, you know, that's not even um, sort of like gamification, right? And, and getting you addicted. Because I don't think anybody can get addicted to tip baiting, right? This comes out of the left field. You don't see this thing coming in. Boom, it snaps you in the face and suddenly your, your $15 reverts to $2. That's just theft. That's just breaking a, 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 a binding contract. I don't know why attorneys aren't all over Uber Eats as far as tip baiting goes. Because tip baiting is a whole dynamic, different dynamic of theft that they are encouraging. DoorDash is encouraging. Instacart is encouraging. <sighs> Why do I say that? Because I, I hope that some attorney hears this opportunity to go out and fight for drivers and, and hold the companies responsible. That's why I always throw in these sound bites. Um, so false advertising of huge false advertising of huge pay when only a few pay well. The next thing they do when drivers get smart is to fire for unfair reasons. So sounds like unfair the unfair reasons, wrongful deactivations of smart truckers. Uber freight truckers. Getting too smart for them, they fire you. Deactivated. By the way, I should be representing truck drivers in wrongful deactivations as well. Thank you for giving me another business idea. Thank you for opening up. I will, I will put that in. I will get that integrated. Thanks to his. I, I will bring in a division. I'll have a meeting with these attorneys. I'll have a meeting with the paralegals and say, you know what, as of next week or at the end of the month, obviously this all has to be digitally programmed. We are going to also represent Uber freight drivers that have been wrongfully deactivated. Because what this gentleman is telling me, the same shit they have to face as rideshare drivers and food delivery drivers. They also get wrongfully deactivated because they're just too smart. When they figure it out, Uber doesn't like you figuring out, then they punish you. When Uber figures out, oh, the acceptance rate is dropping. Here come the threatening and punishing messages. This is how they roll. And I love to take those bullies on. I love to, 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 to break jaw bones, right? When I hear about that shit, it drives me furious. It brings out the crazy fucking South African rugby player in me. I just want to go brawl and go crazy. When I hear stories like that, you know, how the big guy just bullying, bullying, taking, stealing, figuring out all the shit, tip baiting, stealing from truck drivers, wrongfully deactivating them. Boom, boom, boom. You can slap them down. Dara, you know, you know, the one thing Dara and David Rich and Tony Zoo should all know, I ain't afraid of these motherfuckers. Not one single little bit. And that comes from my upbringing. You know, you, I would challenge Dara Koshashawi to go and run 4,000 casino machines in the slums of Africa. Good luck. If you come out alive, I, I think you deserve a certificate. I got the certificate. Been there, got the t-shirt, made the money. Thank you. Amen. It's still alive. So 100%, I'd, 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 I'd really want to go out and brawl and fight for, for the, the truckers. Uh, I, I do think we have a lot in common. It's, it's a hard job and we're not afraid to work. Right, we're not afraid to grind, and grinding means going 10, 12 hours straight, 
even more as a truck getting up the next morning brushing your teeth getting some breakfast and off you are heading the road again doing the next six seven hundred miles so truckers come onto my platform join the family if you are a trucker you're hearing this put this in the trucker forums right if you want someone who has a mouthpiece an audience and wants to fight for you bring me the stories Bring me the emails. Bring me the truth. Let's, let's put it out there into the universe. Let's hold up the mirror to these scoundrels and show them who they really are. Let's show the Darras, the David Rishes, and the Tony Zoos of the world who they really are. They are scoundrels. And they work for scoundrels. And they're protected by scoundrels. We have the numbers. They don't. We have the unions and can form the associations and organizations. They can't. We have the millions of, 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 they have the millions of dollars, but we have the millions of people. So in, in this gladiator game, we should win all day long. So don't be shy. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared to stand up. Don't be uh, uh, afraid to confront. Put the stories out there. Start your own channels. Share the videos. Don't be afraid of that. Never, ever be afraid of the truth. Never. The truth has to be told. The facts have to go out there. And the facts are, whether you're a truck driver, a rideshare driver, or a food delivery driver, the companies, the gig companies, are taking advantage of us. So, a little bit of clarification uh, needed in the